Welcome back to Chamber Exchange, a TV show. I want to thank our sponsors that helped make the show happen. Uh, Bank Hometown, and we also want to acknowledge the Worcester Railers Hockey Club, who concluded another successful season coming back after the COVID shutdown, and we look forward to hockey returning next fall at the DCU Center. Uh, but uh, as the seasons change, baseball has begun here in Worcester. Uh, I want to welcome Dan Ray III, who is the Executive Vice President and General Manager of Real Estate Development and Business Affairs at the Worcester Red Sox, and also a member of the Worcester Regional Chamber of Commerce Board. Dan, welcome. Thanks, Tim. Good to be here. Good, good. Well, second season uh, is underway. A couple of home stands already. <laughs> How's it going uh, year two compared to year one? I, I think we have really a lot of momentum behind us here. Um, the team on the field has been, I think, an exciting team to watch so far. Um, we're above 500, hitting a lot of home runs, playing a lot of exciting baseball. And then off the field, we've had a really strong start. Um, our first homestand of the season, we had six games, and three of those were sellouts on opening night, uh, on Friday night, and on Saturday as well. So we had three of our six first games as sellouts. Uh, we've been averaging about 7,000 fans a game at the ballpark, um, and people are excited. People are excited to have baseball back. We had that momentum despite the fact that um, on, uh, on, I think, five of the six days, we had rain, snow, or even some sleet mixed in. So even with the weather, Worcester fans have been out, they've been hardy, they've been yeah. excited, and that's great to see. Well, Worcester Red Sox fans undaunted. And, you know, very little different situation than last year. We had the season delayed, you know, because of, of, of COVID and some of the uh, dynamics with Major League Baseball. The city of Worcester had a restriction on how many people could come into the ballpark, I think, uh, until mid-June anyway. Mm -hmm. So probably good for a positive for you and your team, at least to be able to go into the season on time uh, and kind of uh, having – uh, knowing that there aren't those restrictions and actually having the ballpark com completed. Yeah, I've said to people that this opening day was almost our first true opening day. Last year was great. Uh, we had opening day on May 11th, 2021. We had 2,377 people in the building, and that was great. Um, our partners in the city and the state, uh, the city manager, the mayor, the city council, certainly the lieutenant governor and the governor have been fantastic. Um, but it was still challenging in that first month and month and a half of the season to be looking up and seeing a lot of empty seats, seeing certain seats that were tied off because we wouldn't let people sit too close to each other. Um, so it was it was challenging, but then once we hit that June point and we were able to go 100%, I think then we really hit our stride. I uh, had some good second half momentum, and thankfully we've been able to carry that over uh, into the second season here. Yeah, yeah w without a doubt. And and the other you know element uh, of, of this is, you know, even with the delayed season, with the restriction of the 100 plus teams in minor league baseball, when all said and done at the end of the inaugural season, uh, Worcester Red Sox were sixth in overall yeah, attendance? Yeah, we were sixth in overall attendance. There are two sort of metrics. One is paid attendance, so that's how many tickets you sell. But there's also turnstile, which is how many people actually use the tickets, because not everyone uses right. their ticket. People decide to stay home for some reasons. Uh, we were actually number one in overall turnstile wow. in the industry. So that was pretty amazing. And those other five teams that were above us on the paid ticket number were like Las Vegas, Indianapolis, Charlotte, Columbus. I mean, major cities. So to see Worcester punching in that weight class with a Charlotte, with a Las Vegas, I think is just a testament to really what we've stepped into, what we've become a part of, and uh, that's really exciting for us to be part you of. You know, that. and for our viewers, you know, from the Worcester Red Sox have a home stand at Polar Park, um, that's literally tens of thousands of people, mm -hmm. many of them coming into the city and region from other parts of New England. Uh, going to restaurants and bars, sometimes staying over at our hotels, mm -hmm. uh, having a great experience. And literally, Dan, you know, before the show we started taping, I was just sharing a story. I got uh, uh, someone reached out to me last night who had worked at some of the Worcester area colleges, is involved with the Northeast uh, Association, and had come to one of the recent homestands, had not been in Worcester in a while, and she was blown away by her experience at Polar Park and the time she spent in the season, mm -hmm. and reached out to the chamber yeah. to help explore them bringing their convention to Worcester mm. in 2024. So, you know, that's the type of impact that's not always easy to quantify in terms of economic uh, positive things that you see from people coming and having a great experience at the park. I mean, we have been, I think, pleasantly surprised by just how regional a product this has become and how we get people from different areas, not just Worcester and Worcester County, although that's certainly the bedrock for us, but beyond the area. We've seen people come from all six New England states. We've tracked it, actually. We've looked at some of our metrics and some of our internal data, and we've seen more people coming from outside of this region than, frankly, we expected. Um, and I think part of the reason we chose Worcester, I always say there are 26 different reasons or so why we chose Worcester. One of them was the centrality and the way in which different roads make this an easy-to-get-to place from different parts of New England. So when you have that 
part of the formula. And then you have, you know, the chamber, you have Discover Central Mass and Monique Messier's group, and you have others who are pushing this narrative that's, I think, get the added benefit of being true, that Worcester's easy to get to and a great place to go. Um, you see that formula coming together, and it's really exciting for us. Right. And in addition to, to the, the, the baseball games, it's also become like a community venue, especially with the outdoor opportunity. 5Ks, a whole bunch of events, you know, mm -hmm. uh, community events. Maybe talk about, you know, there are opportunities there and how you see that, that yeah. aug augmenting the 70 plus home games? Yeah, yeah, we, we had, I think last year, over 200 non-baseball events. And that was during a year when there were COVID restrictions for much of the year. So we had everything from the 25 or 50 or 100 person luncheon or dinner to, you know, the Holy Cross football game where we had 9,500 people in the stands for that. Uh, we just announced actually our, our next Holy Cross football game against Bucknell this fall on October 8th. So we're very appreciative to President Rougeau and Kit Hughes and Nick Smith and the team there for making that happen again for us. Um, but to see that, to see, like you said, road races, we have the uh, pie K, we call it, coming up with Table Talk Pies uh, this coming weekend. We have just so much activity. And you look at our calendar, basically every week you have 10 to 20, 30 events happening at the ballpark. Um, and like you said, that brings more visitors, more people here, and more feet to the street. And, you know, it couldn't happen last year because of you know, the COVID situation, as we talked about, but really a nice touch to you and the whole organization. You know, some of the local baseball teams from not mm -hmm. just Worcester, but the region had a chance to play, I think, three sets of games. And uh, mm -hmm. uh, I, I know what it meant for some of those kids. One of the, the kids who pitched was my nephew. But, uh, you know, what an experience to be able to play yeah. in a pro ballpark uh, yeah. in front of family and friends, and uh, those are the types of things you, you're all doing on a regular basis in a variety of ways. Yeah, we're trying to. We're, we're trying to get out there. You know, Dr. Charles Steinberg, our team president, I think he's probably spoken to every little <laughs> league, or maybe every little leaguer in the last year. Uh, he's amazing in that respect, yeah. and our community relations department, our our entire front office really takes it on itself to get out there and be very active, be very visible. You know, Joe Bradley, Alex Richardson, Kim Miner, Sabria Chowdhury, all the people in that area for us really make a point of emphasis to get out there. And that comes from Larry, frankly, and Charles who say, we need to be growing the game at the grassroots mm -hmm. level. We need to be getting out there. We need to be active. And then when you can invite those ballplayers into your ballpark to make their own memories, um, that brings it all full circle right. for us. Some upcoming dates, anything in particular you want to highlight? Uh, just baseball games. Baseball, baseball games, games, I say, with the big thing. You know, we, we, we are here for the rest of this week, um, and then we're going to have a busy May, a busy June. Uh, we now have all of our single game tickets available on sale. Uh, we held back certain summer games just because we wanted to get some of our early season games sold. So now we have all tickets available, and uh, we have Friday night fireworks. We have Saturday and Sunday family activities. Um, it's a great take whenever you come out to the ballpark. So I'm sort of love to see people so here. Single tickets, up. group tickets, and and there's a lot of little yeah. places that you've purposely built within the ballpark that are great to host. Mm -hmm. You know, staff, teams, organization, group. Yeah. You know, events and, and, and parties. Tons. I think we have at least seven, if not more, party areas. So if you have your birthday, your bar mitzvah, your bachelor party, your bachelorette party, whatever it is, uh, we have a spot for you. So group sales has been great for us, and then the single game tickets as well, um, filling the ballpark up, getting people there. Uh, the players tell us and the coaches tell us, you know, Worcester's ballpark and Worcester's crowd has a different vibe and different buzz than almost any other ballpark they go to. So to keep that going is uh, really important for us. That's right, and uh, we have the tour centennial coming up, and there'll be, Polo Park will be hosting some of that, Worcester's 300th uh, anniversary as a municipality that'll be a piece of it and also mm -hmm. the fire for friday night fireworks friday night fireworks so we have friday night fireworks for every game of this season but we're also doing a friday night fireworks um, on the tercentennial weekend so that'll be really cool um, tying in the the new with the old and the history part of things um, it's really cool for us to be able to do that right well dan ray uh, wears a lot of hats uh, at polar park but uh, thank you for for you and your team for for the work and really having such an impact and in integrating with the community. Anytime, Phil. Great. Tim, Great. sorry. That's Tim. I right. uh, want to welcome, uh, thank you, and, and, and welcome you back for our, our next show coming up soon. But I want to thank our sponsors that helped make the show happen. Uh, that is Bank Hometown. And so uh, with that, we'll see you next time on Chamber Exchange, the TV show.